I was not. <laughs> hey fans, welcome back. Uh, it's another broker talk show. And I'm here with a, a superstar in our industry uh, in many ways, Christine Ives Polizzi. I'm saying their, your name correctly, aren't I, Chrissy? Absolutely, yeah. Um, Chrissy was nowhere, and then out of the blue, she became uh, this superstar in the real estate industry. But it didn't start with real estate. It started with her habits and the way that she thinks long before that. Uh, fill us in, Chrissy. What's it like being you the superstar <laughs> superstar <laughs> i don't know if i say i'm a superstar but i'm definitely grateful for you know where i'm at and where i've come for such a short time and um it's been quite the journey and um i, I was i haven't been happier in years so it, it's definitely been a fun experience well uh let's fill people in you're um you're a double icon agent and what that means is you've capped for those of you in not in the industry a uh, capping is an amount that you pay to your your agency uh, and then after that you don't have to pay your agency anymore because you made enough money for them so you have double capped uh in 18 months i think and well, it, I in addition to capping, after you cap and you get your 100%, you have to sell another 20 homes after that to reach icon status. So I was able to cap, which was about um, 3 million in sales, sell 20 properties after that. That was my icon one. And then I was able to do again, sell another 3 million and then sell 20 homes after that. And now it's my second icon in 18 months. So that, that's really, really exciting. A anybody who's in this industry knows that's uh, hustling along and you have been doing this in Pennsylvania for years, but you have just now expanded. You've grown a team and you've expanded into Florida. Talk a little yes. bit about that. So I, I started in Pennsylvania um, in September of 2021 and um, I set some goals that I was able to attain re rather quickly. And, and I'm sure we'll talk about them in a little while. Um, so from that point, I started, I used to live in Florida for about 10 or 11 years, and it was always my goal to get back down here. Ne never did I think it would be in the real estate industry. Um, so I set a goal to at least get my license. So I was able to do that. I just got my license in Florida in January. So in order to be down here and hopefully, you know, learning the real estate game, um, I formed a team up north. So I had people I could trust to handle my transactions, you know, up there, I still have a hands on, you know, hands in the pot, but they, um, they're, they're, they're working the deals up there. I'm down here trying to get things off the ground. Um, my husband's also a local, a mortgage broker, both in PA and Florida. So we're, we're working congruently on growing our business down here as well as keeping it going in PA. And, um, it's, it's, it's interesting because the, the markets are so different. The, the, sure. um, contracts are different every, you know, the condo, which I was talking to you about previously, there's just a ton of due diligence to um, protect my all buyers. The rules, and, all the yeah, rules are and different, so I'm, you know. I'm jumping in head first and, you know, going through that right now. And Florida in particular is one of those, and, uh, one of those states like California. It's one of those states where the rules are very, very specific and you really have to know what you're doing. While, while you're doing it and yep. and that's true everywhere but in the state where i am uh massachusetts you only had to take 40 hours worth of study and that's really ridiculous because it's so important what you do for your your clients were uh financial consultants as well as you know understanding uh uh properties and zoning and and uh uh, buildings and electrical and plumbing. It's, it's incredible. Oh. Yeah. You need, you need to have like, like I will, I'm determined. I don't stop at anything. I, I already reached out to multiple agents down here. Um, even though I'm an icon agent, I don't know this industry. Well, I want, right. you know, I, I want to protect my reputation. So I have recruited my own mentor, you know, I'm splitting some commissions with her just to have two uh, set of eyes on everything. Um, I've already been in to talk to my broker multiple times, having her review all the documents and make sure that, you know, everything, everything is in order and I'm protecting my client to the best of my ability since um, Florida is a, your own due diligence state. So, sure. sure. Yeah. So uh, what, what did you do before it was real estate and, and um, how did you become so successful so quickly? So I honestly think, I mean, 
we talked previously about this and, and, it, and it's really where I think everybody, including myself, needs to start. It, start. it starts with your habits. It starts with who you are. It starts with, you know, your core being. So both habits on a, um, you know, what you're eating, what you're, how much you're sleeping, um, because that you, you have to be mentally sharp. You have to be centered. You have to be grounded. On the other end of that is I really believe in being aligned and manifestation and meditation, because if I'm, if I'm not centered and my ego's driving, you know, um, it, it's not going to go in good places. I want to be centered. I want to make sure I'm helping people for the right reasons. And I get fulfillment when I'm doing that. So but I, I set the groundwork for, you know, th those ha daily habits you know, trying, trying to get enough sleep, eating well, making sure I'm exercising, making sure my relationships are balanced, right. my work life balance and, and self care. That comes a lot. My, my first life was, um, I have my degree in exercise physiology and I was, uh, in the fitness industry actually down here in Florida for about, you know, 15 years, maybe longer. Um, and I was, I was at the top of my game and I absolutely loved it. It was my passion then. Um, I loved motivating people. I loved seeing, um, just, just, it was so fulfilling helping people because when they, they reach their goals with physical fitness, they're also, their life is improving in all these other ways yeah, and sure. it goes hand in hand. So once I got a taste of that, that's who I became. So no matter what I'm doing, I'm always looking for the, the person's why and looking for, you know, like, how do we really align this? How do we, how do we, you know, create the vision and reach it? Um, it, it of course, in the shortest time period possible. So in doing that, um, I learned how to coach people. I learned how to work with people. And then my second life was, um, I was a Montessori teacher for first and second grade students. And that was also for it, very, very fulfilling, especially if you know anything about Montessori, it's all about, um, you know, self-directed learning. It's all about intrinsic motivation. So you, you, you guide students and now I, I kind of do the same thing with people and people on my team without even realizing I'm doing it it's like you, you try to encourage intrinsic motivation right. you, you know what right. I mean so people are growing and feel, feeling fulfilled at the same at the same time so then that that teaching experience let me tell you if you're if you are um, a teacher you know how to multitask sure. and that and that becomes your superpower and in real estate when you can multitask and still stay centered and grounded um, you know, it's a recipe for success, 100%. So that was a little bit of my background. And when I was teaching, something wasn't feeling right anymore. It just wasn't, I wasn't fulfilled anymore. I was um, feeling very tired all the time, sluggish, getting sick a lot, um, never really got to the bottom of it. And then after that, I, uh, I, I found out I had an autoimmune issue. So I took some time off and I took about two years I struggled. I really struggled with my identity because it's like, okay, if I'm not the trainer anymore, I'm not the teacher anymore. My daughter's going off to college. Like I kind of went through an identity crisis, I feel. Sure. So I just, I stripped all that away. And like, and, and I mean, like, like, I mean that in all levels possible, I just stripped everything away. I started from ground zero and I tried to rebuild myself. So, um, and that was relationships. That was my health. That, that that's on all levels. Once I was like, once I was able to do that, then it was, okay, I need a job. <laughs> so I thought real estate would be a great job because I thought I had control because like, I really like having a boss and having to go, you know, it was right. too much stress on me. I always felt like I was letting somebody down. So having control of, you know, um, having control of that with real estate meant the world for me. I honestly just planned on being gainfully employed, selling a couple houses, and taking it easy and letting myself, you know, continue to heal. Well, that's not what the universe had in store for me or God had in store for me, however you want to look at it. Um, right out of the gate, I, I, I hit the ground running. I absolutely loved it. I was helping people right and left. It didn't feel like I was selling houses. It felt like I was making friends and, and we, we had like, you know, we had a treasure map and this is what we were looking for. And this was the price range we were looking for. And I loved, I just loved learning. Um, I was learning so much so fast and it just, it just became really fun and exciting. So, um, wow. Wow. Yeah. That, that was a lot. And, and now, <laughs> and now our audience understands you are absolutely relentless. 
and and that is part of what makes you uh, successful at what you do. But I want to talk about uh, educators and teachers make absolutely fabulous uh, real estate agents if they're going to a second job. And I know a lot of teachers out there are thinking about that. Um, but uh, our job a lot is educating our clients and having uh, the ability to do that, seeing people actually get what you're saying to them and understanding that they're getting. And then throw in top of it that it's Montessori where you've got three different age groups, you know, and you've got to juggle those three different things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, you're multitasking. Um it's it's pretty incredible, and I do think that every real estate agent has uh, secret sauce. And you obviously, you know that uh, there's often that people say motion equals emotion. So you started with motion and you never stopped, and mm -hmm. the the desire to constant, never ending improvement. That's another key component to being successful. The word you didn't use. I, I want to talk about right now is mindset. Everything you were talking about was mindset. Mm -hmm. I mean, laws of attraction. If you don't have, uh, if you're thinking, oh my God, it's raining today. It's such horrible. Now the market's not, <laughs> you know, that it's going to be the same thing for somebody who wakes up and says, oh God, it's raining. The flowers are going to grow. You know, the trees are, are you know, things are living. Mm -hmm. uh, that's mindset. And yes. your results come from that how you're thinking what you're thinking the questions that you ask yourself mm -hmm. so uh, what kind of questions do you ask yourself at the beginning of the day for instance so, do you have a yeah i definitely do affirmations all the time um somebody once said to me like worrying is like praying for something you don't want to happen and that <laughs> just really hit home i'm like it really That's is because every, yeah. yeah everything else i'm doing i'm trying to focus up so no matter what, I look for the silver lining. Um, you know, I, I try to, I don't just pretend everything's good and, and, and move from it. I, I'm very honest with my it's self-awareness. I'm very honest with myself. Um, I'm aware. And then I, I, I take the necessary steps to, to work through whatever those feelings are. But mindset is everything. Um, I realized over the last two years, um, you know, not to, not that you have to keep a small circle, but you have to be very protective of who you let into your circle, you know, and that's right. kind of difficult sometimes because you want to help everybody. But at the same right. time, if, if it's going to be, um, you know, draining on, on, on your on your energy, then it, it's not necessarily meant to be. So I constantly say, like, whatever's not meant for me, remove from remove from my life. And, and I'll accept that. Um, the other thing I, I do is instead of like, praying or I want this or I want that I, I act as if it already has happened or I will ask the question like wow this is how how can I how can I be such a cut edge um real estate person in South Florida and it's kind of like I'm asking how can I do that but in, in regard I'm also kind of stating it like it, it's I a am. possibility yeah. I am it's in the process of happening yeah so and I I cannot believe I've just each time I was doing, you know, practicing the affirmations and, and, and prayers and meditations. Um, when it starts happening, you create this momentum. And then yeah. when everything that you're working on is just falling into place, you, you can have 100 percent trust in it. And so then all those doubts start going out the window. And then I just try to keep like mindsets in my circle. So, yeah. you know, I'm not saying if, you, if you're having a bad day and whatever, it's nice to be able to talk to somebody and let, but that person should also be not wallowing in your pity party. It's like, okay, have a 10 minute pity party and now let's get on to solutions. And yeah. how are we going to, you have to have an, it, it is what it is mindset and then be like solution, solution based, not problem based. Right. And um, I honestly, mindset is everything. And you're right. Like I didn't even mention that because I take it as such a, um, as such a given, but I'm glad you reminded me of that because I think sometimes I expect or assume that other people are automatically in the right mindset because I right. practice it so long, right. but even in, being in a leadership role, that is something that you constantly need to, you know, reiterate with myself and also with people sure. in my circle. So, sure. Yeah. Sure. You know, I, I think a lot of people are confused about the fake it to make it kind of a thing. They think you're, you're actually faking it. Like uh, you're imagining yourself a successful real estate agent. So you go out and you buy a Mercedes, 
you know that that is that is the absolute worst thing to do the right. the whole the whole fake it to make it is don't fake it actually be the thing if you want to be right. a successful agent wake up in the morning and saying i am a successful agent what am i doing right now that's helping me do that and then 100%. do those kinds of things and i used to think fake it till you made it made um i thought that was this is so uh, ironic, but I used to think that was being inauthentic. And it yeah. took me some, some somewhere along the journey to realize that's not being inauthentic. As long as you're saying that, and then you're putting the action in. You can't it's, just say it without the right. action. So right. it's like, I am this and I'm going to dress like right. it. I'm going to put my, you know, put everything together, but I'm also going to do all the due diligence and do take the action steps right. to get me there. I'm not just going to go magic universe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it, it's confusing because the word fake, you know, you, you think right. of it fake, but it can't be fake at all. You have to really it, it, bring it inside and and knowing follow what successful agents are and and build a group of people around you that are, are good, which which brings us to the next uh, to the next moment. Um, and you are so dynamic and you are building a team with all women. Women in leadership in real estate have just grown exponentially um, for very good reason. Uh, female agents are, frankly, I think they pay attention to more details, uh, mm -hmm. not more than me. But uh, no, of course not. <laughs> not you. But uh, but the the detail orientation is is incredible, and real estate is not only details; it's the big picture and all that. I'm not trashing men. Uh, please uh, don't make any of those comments. Um, <laughs> but I but I'm I am thrilled to see people like you, Chrissy, talk about this group of of successful women you've brought together and what you're building. Awesome. So I have a team of 10 women right now, and we, we put together as much as it is, I am the team lead. It, it is our team. So I, I know a lot of teams are, um, you know, their, their structure is for the team lead to kind of be the leader and then give the leads and train everybody under them and hold them accountable and responsibility. Instead of me being that we do that for each other. So we came yeah. together and I feel that everyone in my, in um our, our team is an entrepreneur. They have the right mindset and they're all going to, like, we are all going to be super duper successful, like um, hand in hand. So we have, everybody has their specialty. Um, we collaborate, we support each other, we empower each other. And I see that more with my team than I than I've seen with any other brokerage thus far because the structure is di just different and the intention is different and when you you put that together it just creates a powerful recipe for success and when you have other women like, rooting for you and, and it's also when you get to a certain age a lot of women don't have other women friends when, right. when we're younger because it's just a different it's a different mindset and understanding and you you gain more wisdom so you know as you get to be 40 50 years old we have that wisdom. We have that understanding that, listen, I'm, I'm going to straighten your crown. You're going to straighten my crown. We, we have each other's back. And that I just got goosebumps because it's, it's just so powerful that we are able to do that. So it's so fulfilling for me because I mean, like I hit the ground running and then, you know, the girls that originally signed under me, you know, they did phenomenal, especially for, for early, um, for just starting out, we all did phenomenal right out of the gate. But now that they're capping and they're running and they're going to be hitting icon, and it's like to have all these success stories within one group of, of girls right now of 10 women is, is just a powerful statement. Like I can't imagine, I, I mean, my girls are being recruited hardcore for, by the top brokers in my area. And I honestly just feel flattered that I have a seat at, at the table. We have a seat at the table after 18 months with, you know, brokers that have been in the business 20, 30 years, and um, they're seeing our production and, and we're well sought off, you know, sought after. And um, so we're doing something right. And it's just, it's really exciting. So Doing a lot of things right. Um, is is the team both in Pennsylvania and and in Florida? So tell, uh, talk to us where, where exactly the towns that you're in and the areas that you cover. Okay. So in Pennsylvania, I'm in Northeast, Northeast PA. So I'll go anywhere from the Pocono Mountains to Lake Wall and Paul Pack down to Luzerne County, which is um, 
not all the way down to Philly, but ju just short of Allentown, somewhere, somewhere in there. So I'll pretty much go to a 45 to 60 minute radius outside of Scranton. So the Scranton is the main hub. I belong to the Scranton Board of Realtors. Um, and then in Florida, we're actually in South Florida. So I belong to the Beaches MLS, which is from Port St. Lucie down to um, North Miami. So I'm covering covering any you know Boca, um, Boca, Pompano, Delray, Fort Lauderdale are are going to be my main you know my main hubs. And then um, you know we'll we'll see where it takes us from there. Um, I'm right now in between. I'm I've been. Figuring out, um, I go to Summit, which is a shareholders meeting for EXP in Orlando at the end of May. So when I'm over there, I'm going to brainstorm and mastermind with a lot of top team members and kind of what, look at the format. I, I'm meeting with, I actually have some meetings set up with people who have done what I'm doing now in the exact states, Pennsylvania and Florida, to see how they did it, what, what, you know, what worked, what didn't work. Um, I eventually do want to build a team down here so that just like up north when I'm up there, then I have people to work right. with down here. So far, I've already um, connected with another EXP agent who um, is walking alongside me with the transactions that I'm working on down here. Like I said earlier, just to have two sets sure. of eyes on everything. But I'm also going to a ton of networking events, biz to biz events and networking with, with all different agents. And then whatever the need, I, I don't know exactly what the need is going to be, but I but I assume that I'm going to eventually build a team down here. Um, but I just don't know what that's going to look like yet. I'm, you know, so stay tuned. <laughs> we'll see where that goes. Well, in, in 18 months, you've come this far. So uh, we'll check in actually yeah. relatively soon because your gestation <laughs> period is like tumbling, tumbling and, and growing, is. you know. Um, what haven't I asked you that you'd like to talk about? Uh, because you've gone through, you know, the move and all of that it is, uh, it is a time for reflection. And I know that you're, you're driven to build the new time, but in your thoughts, uh, what have you been thinking now that your lifestyle is, is really inclusive of two areas that you've loved for most of your life? I've, I've just been reminding myself to um, stay centered and stay self-aware and, and like the word, I like the word you, you use reflective um, to, I'm, I'm very results driven and um, business minded. And that's, you know, that's been my driving force, but I have to keep reminding myself that I'm also about alignment and fulfillment. And sometimes just because the business plan isn't coming together, I have to follow, um, you know, I have to follow my, my heart a little bit more sometimes than whatever I had planned on paper, because that's, that's the road of authenticity. That's, that's helping me skyrocket quickly. So even though I plan on doing A, B, and C, things get mixed up. So I just adapt and move in the direction I'm, I'm supposed to be moving. in. so I, I've just been really reflecting, like, don't move, don't, don't move too fast. I'm trying not to, um, you know, bite off more than I could chew taking baby steps, you know, I, I had all these goals set um, to be like up and running in by this summer in Florida. And I, I had to take a step back and realize that there, there's a lot to learn. There's a new market. I need to keep things going up north. So it, I wouldn't call them baby steps, but I would say they were stronger than the strides I was originally planning right. on taking. Right. And so I kind of, I kind of decided, so my goal is more toward the fall and the winter and I'm going to be open to the way things unfold. The important thing is that I'm putting in the action and then being reflective right. and then making choices based upon where that is leading me um, rather than, you know, just I'm not going to steamroll and and power through anything. I'm, I'm going to take take one step, look, listen and, and really just follow yeah. the path that's meant for me authentically. Well, I think people who are successful do that. I mean, they'll they'll have big goals, they'll have scary goals. I want to do this and I want to do it this period of time. But between that day, a month away, two uh, a year away, uh, mm -hmm. a quarter a quarter away, you have all these individual days. And if you're working on little pieces of that, that goal may come faster, or it may end up being a different goal. But it's still because you're paying attention to it, you're you're reflecting on it, you're written down, you're seeing it, you're mm -hmm. you're thinking about it during the day, you're talking to other people. Um, it's interesting because um, it, it is cool that my husband is also a lender, both in PA and, and South Florida. So, and I do believe like when, when you have two conscious um, 
minds that are working towards the same goal. I, I think that also helps it flourish quicker. Um, so we're actually planning on buying our own property down here in um, November, December of this year. So not are we only researching for our clients, we're also researching for ourselves, making sure that we make the right, whether it's going to be investment or that we're going to Airbnb while we're up north, or if it's going to be just, you know, our second property. So that's really exciting in, in itself. And then my daughter actually got her internship down here for the summer. So she's going to be down here for two months interning um, in Fort Lauderdale. So I, it's just, it's just interesting how everything's just falling into place and unfolding and um, we'll, you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I, and and it's wonderful. Uh, she's interning. She's interning in real estate. She, what is she interning in? So um, she's interning at Fiori Financial, which is an investment company. So they mostly, obviously, they invest in the stock market, but they also invest in real estate. And they have, I believe, four or five divisions. They have a, a sports management division where they represent the professional athletes um, in South Florida and other areas. And then they have a luxury brand. So she, her, her major is finance. Um, so she'll be kind of learning all those different arenas and she'll get a taste for what that is. And, and she's also pre-law. So we'll, we'll, we'll see if she goes into real estate <laughs> law or not. Those, so are, those are all good things. I mean, the, the whole law thing and uh, it's often more baseball than, than the yeah. other sports, but. But you know. she's, she's like, please don't talk about real estate anymore today between my husband and I, because like we, you know, there's days we just eat, free and breathe and yeah, live real right, estate and we right, love it and right, we're passionate. Right. And then, uh, you know, but then there's also, I talked to you about this earlier. Sometimes there's times where it's like, okay, like I'm, I'm really, I need to take a step back. And like I did it, I would talk to you. I took a few days when she came down for the weekend and we just, you know, we did the beach, we did the pool. Yeah. I told everybody yeah. I'm unavailable for four, yeah. not unavailable, but you know, they they <laughs> they talk about uh uh not being the secret agent you know people not knowing who you are you wear a pin you wear a name tag or or something like that and uh my wife of 35 years uh will go into a restaurant we're going to have dinner together and she says please be a secret agent tonight <laughs> <laughs> if so anybody you no, if anybody saying. mentions real estate, don't jump in there and, you know. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, I know exactly how you feel. Or, or should my, my daughter knows how your wife feels. <laughs> it's, it's hard, though. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's when it's your passion and you love it and it's, and it's yeah. you know, it's fun to talk about, I think. I don't know. And, and get well, things going with it. Well, it's true. But uh, if you think about it, uh, where we live is vitally important to who we are and how we are, where we grew up, the things that were around, the foods, the foods that we ate. It's food, shelter and clothing. Shelter is number two. And, you got and, it. And, um, you know, the passion is not just to know the rules and the zoning and the building and all of that. The real passion is is in understanding the people. And in understanding what they need. And uh, I know that this will happen to you in Florida, like it happened uh, happens to you in Pennsylvania. You'll be driving down and I said, oh, I put the uh, O'Briens in that house, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. and I put the Reddies in, in that condo. And and it, it gives you a sense that you're building a community. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the juice that true agents uh, who are comfortable enough dealing with uh constant daily rejection and yeah. and annoyances can break through that and and love what's going on around them in a day i just love the appreciation you know because i i i listen to what people need and i'm patient with it and it's like at the end of the day when we finally find what they need or if it's an fha buyer that needs a seller's assist and, and every other agent gave up on them because they weren't getting property at the right I, I play the long game and we look for mar properties that have been on the market for a while. We like, you know what I mean? I, I and I keep, they, they stay hopeful during the whole process. I go, it's going to take us a little longer, but we're going to get there. Right. And then we're like, I just got goosebumps because like that authenticity and that, and that gratefulness is just like, so, so fulfilling. Um, it's just, it really is. And so when I, that just keeps happening, it, it just m motivates you to, to keep yeah. doing it. You know, it does. It does. And and um, I had a client uh, recently. I'm only going to bring this up because I, I also fired a client, got fired. I'm not sure. We mm. weren't working together. 
he was a, he was a micromanager and calling me up and and telling mm -hmm. me to do things that were just crazy. And anyway, uh, that's under the bridge. Um, later that same week, I, I got two clients who got exactly what they wanted. But then I had a client that I'd had a couple of years ago call me and ask me if I would be his second in, in terms of his healthcare and everything because he didn't have anybody else. Wow. And I, think, I don't know. You you don't want me to, you know, be the one who says, yeah, pull the yeah. plug. But, right. But I got off wow. the phone and, and, I, and I thought of what that meant. I thought yeah. of what that meant for him to make that call. And, uh, and the I was, trust, the trust I was, he has I was humbled. I was yeah. humbled and honored to be, uh, to be that, but that, that is the juice. Yes. The juice is the, the good money that you can make, but mm -hmm. the juice is really the connections that you make, it uh, is. the, the friendships and the families that you've helped. And, uh, uh, but here's, here's the other thing. And it's true everywhere. If you are selling a house and it's a family and there's a teenager in that house that teenager is just going to hate you <laughs> they will hate you hate you and it has nothing to do with you at all you are taking them away from their home and their friends and oh, for whatever yeah. reason you know it's just like you know yeah. anyway uh, i like the ones that love me because now they have a pool in their backyard <laughs> versus the ones that are like being taken from their friends yeah but, yeah. yeah yeah but, and on the other end of thing i know we've, we've talked about this a few times Some, sometimes you do have to like we talk about mindset and saying no like sometimes you do have to you know kick people to the curb because they're either being draining yeah. or unrealistic yeah. or yeah. or like they want to change the rules midway through yeah. and then they put you yeah. in an uncomfortable position with the transaction yeah. and i just you know that was tough in the beginning um but once I learned how to have those hard conversations, now, now they're not even hard. Now it's just, hey. <laughs> but this yeah, isn't this is working. And that's what I said. I, I work with people I like and trust who feel the same way. Yeah. And, you know, when, when I'm getting offers accepted because the agent on the other side is just like, I, I, I just got this awesome email. They're like, you're, you're quick. You're professional. You do exactly what you say you're going to do. You, you, you know, I give, I'm, I have full transparency. I give background, you know, as much background as I can you know, on, on the situation, the lending, the clients. Um, and it just goes such a long way. And if I keep priding myself on that reputation and, and things keep going smooth, it just makes it that much easier to get offers accepted and, you know, keep moving forward. And I'm right. going to guard that with my life. <laughs> Absolutely. And build and build on it. And build on life. it. Right. Mm -hmm. that, right. That. Because... Is there anything I haven't asked you, Chrissy? I know we don't have that much time and this show goes so quickly. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Let's see. Well, we, we covered everything that we talked about. We have. Uh, the only thing we haven't covered is if people want to be in touch with you, whether they're mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania or down in Florida, or just want to talk to a, a really great agent, or mm -hmm. maybe uh, one of our, our uh, viewers wants to talk to you specifically, how do people mm -hmm. get in touch with you? I mean, there's a couple of ways to get in touch with me. I'd love for you to follow me on social media. It's just my name, Chrissy Ives Polizzi, and look me up. I have two Facebook pages. I, I'm always on there. I'll enter into Instant Messenger. Um, you can jot my phone number down, and uh, it is 570-561-7189, or my website, um, www.christineivespolizzi.exprealty. And uh, dot com, <laughs> and you can you can find okay. me. Ask your questions if you're interested in being a real estate agent. Um, EXP is definitely the place to be. So call me, pick my brain about it. I'd I'd love to help you out. Um, I am a certified mentor. I'd love to mentor. I do also, you know, help coach, especially the the girls on my team. Um, I'm always looking for listings and I'm always looking um, for buyers. And it doesn't matter if it's not in one of the areas that I am in, I am connected with awesome agents across the entire nation, um, even into other countries. So if, you know, if I resonate with you and, and you think I can help you in any way, reach out and um, we'll take the steps to, to find who you need and what you need. And uh, you you make a, an absolutely great point that yes we work in in localized areas but if you're good at what you do people from across the country are going to go to conventions you're going to go to uh, conferences uh, get to know as many smart people as you can because you never know the how that's going to help but all Chrissy and I will tell you it does help 
these Helps things are, time. yeah, yeah. Um, yep. it, another fantastic broker talk. Such <laughs> a pleasure. Uh, Thank you so much, Larry. Oh, it's it's, it's really great honored. to have you. And, uh, you too. Let's do it Christine, again in a few months. <laughs> uh, yeah, we will. We will. Uh, okay. Christine Ives Polisi uh, is down in Florida now. And uh, thank you so much for watching this show. And we look forward to seeing you next week when we have another great guest.